Hi, in this particular video we're going to be looking at a quick test which should take you about uh, around about half an hour or so. It's aimed at around about grade 5 GCSE. Please do visit the website, print off the paper, stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, compare your solutions. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Okay, so in this video, we're looking at um, grade five questions. Don't worry too much about the B part of it. Just basically, we've got um, grade five A, B, C tests. So, okay, so this is non-calculator. Um, I've taken these questions from very similar sort of exam question types. So uh, let's move on then to question number one. So in a sale, normal price is reduced by 25%. So what we're basically saying is the 30 pounds, which is the reduction here is equivalent to 25% of the normal price, okay? So it's really a case of finding out the normal price from this. Now, what we can do is convert all of this to a mathematical statement. So rather than using 25%, I'm going to say 0.25. And rather than writing of the normal price, I'm just going to put N. So if I want to find the value of N, what I do is I divide both sides by 0.25. And that basically means I should get 120 equals N. So therefore, in this particular case, the normal price is going to be equal to £120. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. I've missed out a little bit of calculation with these, so uh, particularly this sort of calculation, but uh, hopefully you'll get the idea on the actual um, um, video what you need to do. OK, let's have a look at uh, question number two. Uh, fairly straightforward, expand and simplify. Very um, popular with um, GCSE type questions, particularly non-calculated. Uh, non you might do it slightly different for me. I use tend to use something called a crab claw. So that's going to give me 10a squared. And that's going to give me minus 40a minus 2a and then minus times a minus is a positive. So that's going to be plus 8. OK, if I tidy that up, I get 10a squared minus 42a plus eight. Okay, now you could leave it at that and probably that would give you the full marks. Um, however, you might notice that all of those are even numbers. So what we can actually do is we can reduce it even further or simplify it even further by dividing through by two. And that's going to give us 5a squared minus 21a plus 4. OK, let's move on to question number three, which is a speed distance time type question. Fairly straightforward. And I would try to encourage you always to write the formula. So Simon's um, speed equals distance divided by time. OK, now if we look at the first sentence, why have they given us that information? Well, what it will allow us to do, if we know it took him four and a half hours at a speed of 70, that will allow us to work out the distance between Leeds and London. So the speed is 70. Um, the distance we don't know but the time it took was 4.5. So remember that we need to convert it to a decimal, um, or we could actually leave it as a fraction, but maybe it's easier with a decimal. If we multiply across them by 4.5, we're gonna get a distance of 315 miles, which is um, the distance that he travels. Now, Josh, it took six hours to make the same journey. So actually for Josh, we can basically say that speed again equals distance divided by time. And again, please do write out the formulas. OK, well, we now know the distance is 315. It took him a time of six hours to actually do the same just distance. So therefore, his total speed was going to be equal to 52.5 miles per hour. And that would be the answer to part A. OK, so part B is one of those sort of throwaway type of questions that they tend to put in. Um, it's only usually one mark. And it says if Josh did not drive along the same roads as Simon, explain how this would affect your answer to part A. Well, it would affect the answer by basically changing um, potentially the distance. So uh, we could say the distance change. OK, so if he used um, maybe um, a shorter, uh, shorter distance, it means he would get a shorter time. 
okay, if he made a, a sort of roundabout route and it was a longer distance, it would take a longer time. So it's just one of those ones where you need to maybe add just a sentence or two just to make sure that you get that additional mark. Okay, hopefully that's okay for you. Let's move on then to question number four, which is the next page. Okay, please do stop the video, have a go at these questions. Um, they are um, really good practice, certainly for GCSE. Okay, so this particular one, we've got 6.24 multiplied by 0 0.008. So the easiest way of doing this is to ignore the decimal point and just calculate 624 times 8. Now, again, you might do it slightly different to me but you should get 4992. Now remember that the decimal point has actually moved once twice and then three four five times so we therefore move the decimal point from here five times so one two three four and then five put a zero in place there so the actual answer to the question will be zero point zero four nine nine two and that would be the answer to question number four. OK, question number five, very similar sort of principles and very popular as well in that what we do is we um, differentiate between the actual calculation and the standard form. So I could write that as 9.4 multiplied by 1.8. And then the standard form part of it is going to be 10 to the power of 4 times 10 to the power of 3. OK, so that's fairly straightforward because that's going to be 10 to the power of 7. We just add those indices. This part of it here we need to calculate. So what I would do is I would do 94 times 18. And again, you might do it slightly differently to me, but hopefully we're both going to get the same answer, which is going to be, um, in terms of digits, 1692. Now, you'll remember that the decimal point has moved moved once, twice, so therefore we're going to move it back twice. So the actual answer here is 16.92 multiplied by 10 to the power of 7. Now, just be careful with this one because um, that, strictly speaking, isn't in standard form. In standard form, the first number has to be between 1 and 9. So therefore, we need to move the decimal point one more place. That will have an impact on the index there. So the actual final answer would be 1.692 times 10 to the power of 8. Um, um, usually these marks are either two or three mark questions, so you'll get that extra mark for make sure it's in standard form. OK, uh, number or part C really is a little bit tougher, is a little bit easier than it actually looks. Um, all we do is we say, well, we're going to again differentiate between the actual calculation, which is 4.5 divided by 1.5, and the standard form element of it, which is 10 to the 7 divided by 10 to the power of minus 3. OK, so 4.5 divided by 1.5 is actually 3. And then the standard form is 7. And because it's a division, it's minus. So it's 7 minus minus 3. Two minuses together make a plus. So it's going to multiply by 10 to the power of 10 because we're actually going to add the 3 to it. So 7 plus 3 is going to be 10. OK, hopefully that's OK for you. Let's move on then to question number 5. Now, question number 5 um, is one of those questions where you can make your life a whole lot easier because at the moment what we've got is men... Uh, to women in the ratio of three to seven. But you'll notice that actually it's asking us to calculate a percentage. So therefore, it makes a whole lot more sense to maintain this radio, ratio. But rather than having 10 people, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make 100 people. So if I multiply that out by 10, I get 100 people, which means that whatever I work out becomes out of 100. Therefore, it makes it much easier for me to calculate the percentage. Because uh, for men, I want 40%. So I've basically got 40% of 30. Well, that equals 12. And then for women, I've got 50% of the uh, 70. So 50% of 70 and that equals 35. So now I've actually got 35 
plus 12, which is 47. So out of the 100 people, I've got 47 out of 100, which equals 47%. And that would be the answer to that particular question. So in those sorts of questions, please do um, have a look at the numbers and see if you can make them a little bit easier for yourself. OK, let's move on then to... Um, Question number six, which is a fairly straightforward factorising. Um, all you need to do is look at two numbers that when you multiply them together make 30, and when you add them together make 13. Those two numbers are 3 and 10, and it's positive and positive. So therefore, I can factorise that to x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 10. OK, and then it says in part B, hence or otherwise. <laughs> OK, so what we basically mean is, is that if we write this as x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 10 equals 0, then we've got two values of x. The first value of x is where we can say, if I just put my finger over there, x plus 10 equals 0. So therefore, x equals minus 10. And then we also have x plus 3 equals 0. So x equals minus 3. And that would be the answer to part B. OK, part C is um, this word here, fully. OK, so usually two marks. You need to be aware that you need to get the highest common factor of 20x squared and 4x, which actually happens to be 4x. So I can factorise that to 4x multiplied by 5x plus 1. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, hopefully that's been useful to you. So I think um, we're going to finish the whole paper on this particular video. There's actually 10 questions in total. So it seems to kind of make sense to work through all of them. It's probably going to take us about 20 minutes on this video. OK, so let's have a look at the next one then. X is inversely proportional to Y. X is given by the formula of 500 over y. So basically what we're saying is x equals 500 divided by y. Then it says find the value of y when x equals 12.5. So we're saying that if x equals 12.5 then the value of y is 100 into y. We've got to find the value of y. So um, there's a little bit of manipulation that needs to take place here, but um, it's slightly outside the scope of these sorts of videos. But if you um, add a link below, if you're not sure about how I'm going to do this, then please let me know and I'll put together a playlist for you. But basically, I'm going to swap those two over. So I get y equals 100 divided by 12.5. So y equals 40. And that's the answer to that particular question. OK, hopefully that's been useful to you. Let's move on then to question number eight, which is completing a table of values. Now, you'll notice that we've got from minus four to two here. What I would normally do with these is um, it's just for me, it's just makes it a little bit easier to concentrate on the positive values, um, but starting actually from zero. So if I feed zero into this, I get zero squared plus two times zero. So this is going to be zero plus one. So therefore, um, y is going to be one. OK, so when x is one, put that into here, one squared plus two times one. OK, so that's one plus two plus one is going to be four. OK, and two into here is going to be two squared, which is going to be four plus two times four is eight plus one is going to be nine. OK, now there is a little bit of space here at the side if you wanted to kind of work through this and it might make a bit of sense. Obviously, for the purposes of the video, I'm trying to be fairly quick. OK, so let's have a look at what happens when x equals minus one. Well, basically, um, the easiest way is to use um, brackets because you need to remember that it's minus one squared. So that's going to be minus one times minus one is going to be positive one. OK, and then I've got two times minus one plus one. OK, so what happens there is I get one and then two times minus one is going to be minus two. So it's one minus two 
plus one. OK, so that's going to be a value of zero. OK, because they all cancel themselves out. OK, so let's have a look at what happens when X is minus two. I think I'll do it over here, actually. So when X is minus two, I've got um, X squared plus two X plus one. So let's have a look. I've got minus two squared plus two times minus two plus one. OK, well, two squared minus two squared is going to be four. And then I've got plus two times minus two is minus four and then plus one. So those two cancel themselves out and I get a value of one. OK, what happens when it's minus three? Well, I've got uh, minus three squared plus two times minus three plus one. OK, so I'm just going to underline those for you. OK, let's have a look at that. So that's going to be nine. And then I've got plus two times minus three is nine minus six plus one. So nine minus six is going to be three plus one is going to be four. OK, final one then. What happens when we've got a value of X equals minus four? OK, so minus four here and that's going to be minus four squared plus two times minus four plus one. OK, remember the use of brackets makes your life a little bit easier for this. So what I'm going to get is going to be 16. And then I've got minus eight plus one. So 16 minus eight is eight plus one is going to be nine. OK, so therefore I've got my grid at the very top of the screen. And then really it's just a case of plotting those particular values. Again, I'm just going to start with easy ones. So I'm going to start with zero, one. That's going to be here. And then I'm going to have one, four is going to be there. And then two, nine is going to be up there. OK, and then if I look at minus one, zero, so minus one, zero is here, which is this one here. And then minus two, uh, positive one is going to be there. Minus three, positive four is going to be there. And then finally, minus four, positive nine is going to be there. OK, and what you'll notice is that you get a very nice um, curve and it should be probably a little bit better drawn than the way I've drawn it on the screen, but you get a very nice quadratic curve. I'm sorry about that bit there. OK, hopefully that's OK for you. Um, please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. OK, let's move on then to the final two questions on this particular video. And we're going to look at uh, the first one, which is uh, question nine, which is a gradient. Uh, now, I just produced a playlist and worksheet on gradient. So if you're not sure, please please do let me know and I'll put the link together for you. OK, so find the gradient line that passes through those particular points. Now, you'll notice that we've got negatives flying around there. So you just got to be a little bit careful with that. But you're basically using the formula gradient equals y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Because if we look at our set of coordinates here, we've basically got um, x2 and y2 and x1 and y1. OK, and then really it's just a case of putting those coordinates in, but be very careful with the negatives. So I'm going to get 10, which is y2 minus and then y1 is minus 2. OK, and then I've got x2, which is minus 3 minus and then I've got x1, which is minus 1. Now you'll notice that I've got these negatives here together. So therefore, they're going to become positives. So the top numerator is going to become 12 because I've got 10 plus 2. The bottom is going to become minus 3 plus 1. So minus 3 plus 1 is going to be minus 2. OK, so therefore, 12 divided by minus 2 is going to give me a gradient of minus 6. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, let's go to the final question on this particular worksheet. I hope it's been useful for you. Um, please do add a like, subscribe, uh, add a comment. Um, it's always very much appreciated. OK, so we've got um, to work out the total surface area of the cone. And very helpfully, they've given this um, a formula here, curved surface area of cone is pi r l. Now, I'm really sorry, it's not particularly sharp on the image, but basically we need the slant height here. Now, unfortunately, we're given the um, perpendicular height of the cone and we're also given the diameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 
Pythagoras to actually tell me then the slant height. So if I draw a little triangle there, what we're doing is effectively using a right angle triangle where the perpendicular height is 15 and the base height is actually, or the base length over here is going to be 8. So what we've effectively done is drawn a right angle triangle into there. Okay, bearing in mind I do need this slant height. Now we've got Pythagoras. So Pythagoras says the square on the hypotenuse, which we'll call it L because that's what we're looking for. The square on the hypotenuse is equals the sum of the square of the other two sides. So I've got L squared equals 15 squared plus 8 squared. OK, hopefully you can see that all right on the video. I'll just move that up a bit. OK, and then that's going to give us then that L squared equals 289. And again, I'm slightly missing out the calculations here, but hopefully you'll get the same answer as me, which is 17. So therefore, we now know the slant height of this particular cone is actually 17. So therefore, we can use that in our formula for the curved surface area. So the surface is going to be pi r l. Okay, now you'll notice it says give your answer in terms of pi. It's just actually in the question without me moving the video down again or moving the paper down again. So therefore, we don't need to worry too much about the value of pi. We can put into here that it's pi multiplied by the radius, which is 8, multiplied by the slant height, which you've worked out as 17. These little dots just mean multiply. And if I tie that up a little bit, I get 136 pi. Okay, now... Just be very careful because the question asks you for, I'll just move this down, for the total surface area of the cone. So just be a little bit careful with that because what we've done is worked out the curve surface area, but we need to take into account the disc or the actual circle at the bottom of the cone. So there is an additional formula, which is the area of a circle that you need to add. So if I write in here circle, OK, and the formula for that is pi r squared. OK, well, that's pi. And then again, it's 8 squared. So that's going to be 64 pi. So I've got two values. One is the surface. One is the circle at the bottom. So therefore, if I write on here that the total surface area, total surface area, is going to be equal to 136 plus 64, which is 200 pi. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, I hope that's been useful to you. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. I'll always come back to you and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.